Hey folks, this is the Proto School Weekly Call for May 9th. Um, just a few updates. We've actually been doing a lot of UX work on Proto School. So I will um, kick us off. And Dan, you're not somewhere where it's easy for you to take notes, right? Yeah, unfortunately not. Okay, no worries. I will work on that. I probably won't have a lot of notes on things coming out of my own mouth. So. Um, I've been working a lot on the MFS tutorial still <laughs> forever, but uh, I feel like I'm making steadier progress. So there are now at least drafts of lessons on making a directory, moving a file, copying a file, reading a file. So we're getting closer to the end of that, and then we'll need lots of uh, lots of testing from people to make sure all the mistakes I've anticipated and provided error messages for are the same ones people make. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the UX front, there are a few things that we've done. So let me, um, pull up. Actually, I'm going to pull up the local host version. So one of the things we've done um, is to add a nice little formatting option when you're, I can probably actually show you lots of things at once here. So there, we had added a view, select, a view solution earlier that when you clicked it, it actually replaced the contents of the editor with the solution and you didn't have a way to like take a look at it, compare it to what you've done and then go back and edit what you've done. It was just overwriting it. So Diogo has updated it. So you now see the solution underneath the, the text that you're working on. It's possible to copy and paste it in there. But it's a little extra step. It makes you do a little bit more of the work yourself, and it preserves the work that you've done and lets you keep working on it. Um, so revamping that is one of the things that we've been working on. And one sec, just lost my notes. Um, and then you'll also find that we've need to think about which lesson to show this on, but so this is now still work in progress, but um, we added the possibility of using markdown formatting within the messages that we give at the end of lesson. So instead of making you look in your console now, you can see a lot of things down here, which was a previous improvement. But now when we're making these little messages that precede it, we can use Markdown to do code highlighting and stuff like that. And that's something we are hoping to do in the near future is also add that to the success and failure messages, which just makes things a little bit friendlier. So the authors can use Markdown to get things to come out the way they want. So that's another one that um, Diogo did recently. Um, we, I fixed some alt tags. I was actually testing something with a screen reader the other day. And as it goes through all of these little, all of these spots, it reads like lesson nine completed, lesson nine in progress, except it was reading those all as complete. Um, and then lesson 11 not started. So it's actually a really nice experience on the screen reader that it's clear what the status is better, I think, than for people who are looking at them and there's occasionally some confusion about what the symbols mean. Um, so we just fixed the alt tag so that it's giving the right message for that symbol that was giving the wrong one. Um, we have some, uh, some typos that got fixed by someone reading through our um, instructions for developing tutorials and those are continuing to be kind of developed and added to as we add new features that people can use. Um, and then the other cool thing is that Ali finished his end-to-end -end testing, which we saw a demo of last week. So 
you can now um, run Cypress and it will click through. It can't do it for file upload lessons, but for every other um, standard lesson, it will go through essentially like click on view solution, replace the code with this code, hit submit and make sure it works, which is a nice way to test that we're providing correct solutions and that our validation is working properly. So that's a really cool feature that Ali got us started on and Diego contributed to as well. Um, I think that's kind of it on the UX front, and I've been getting a lot of pairing help on that MFS tutorial. Um, on the community side, I have a few China requests to work through for new chapters there. Um, I think that's, that's it on my end, apart from a couple of event announcements. Dan, did you have anything you wanted to share today? Um, I think uh, one thing looking at uh, your demo, um, I, I love where things are going. It's really cool to see. Uh, but uh, in the uh, this large and growing list of different tutorials we have, it might be good to put some of uh, each one of the topics into an accordion or something along those lines um, so that you can collapse and see what topics uh, that you can go through lessons on easier. Because as we add, I know it's going to be this very large scrollable list will be hard to navigate. I don't know if that makes sense. Do you mean on the homepage where all of them are listed? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, each individual one, because right now if I, if I was seeing it right, each topic has lessons underneath it. Yeah, um, each tutorial all... contains yeah. lessons, that's right. Exactly. So yeah, that would be an interesting feature to add. Um, if you want to throw in an issue in the queue for that, that's a good idea that we may need to work on as we, as we add more content. It hasn't been an issue so far. You were looking at the version that has the MFS tutorial in it, and without that, it's you can pretty much see at least part of it on the, the main page. But that's good. Right. Idea. Exactly. But we'll get a few more in there soon. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll throw up an issue when I get there. Thanks. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to chat about? Um, I think uh, I am excited to see IBFS camp potentially coming through as well. Have, um, have you heard back yet? I have heard back, and uh, I'm waiting to hear back if there is potentially financial support. To ah, gotcha. Okay. So cool. if there is, yes. If not, then we'll see. Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so that, that leads well into the other thing I wanted to mention for anyone who hasn't heard this spiel on this call already. Um, two events coming up that you might be interested in. One is IPFS Camp, first ever, um, taking place in Barcelona, June 27th to 30th. And the application deadline for that is May 17th, so next Friday, or as soon as space runs out. So I'd encourage people to get applications in early. And it's not clear to everyone from the registration site, but that is a the, the process there for applying is about people reviewing your application, looking at the work you're doing, making sure that the event is a good fit for you and vice versa. So do take the time to, to explain your interest in the decentralized web and IPFS and like kind of work you're doing in the community with photo school, et cetera. Um, and then the other event, which is one that I'm running is offline camp, which happens in Oregon from August 2nd to 5th. Um, and that's a very small tech retreat. We take about 30 to 35 people into the woods and talk about solutions and challenges of really low bandwidth or non-existent network connections, um, which is a, an offline first approach to making tech work. So it's developers and designers. Some of the people who come are interested in decentralized solutions and some are interested in better syncing and that kind of stuff, progressive web apps, all of that. So. Um, feel free to apply to that as well. That one will certainly have registration open longer, but we have a, a discount until May 17th, next Friday, to save $150. And there are a few scholarships available for that one, as well as for IPFS Camp. So there are links in the meeting notes to any of those. Um, yeah. And anything else you think of, Dan? No, uh, it's pretty exciting on all fronts in the community right now. So. Yeah, making, making progress. And we're about to have a lot more content on Proto School because we have some folks preparing IPFS camp content and the workshops, not all of them, but some of the workshops will include, you know, at least part of their content might be some Proto School tutorials. So um, we'll have a lot of work to do kind of proofing other people's uh, tutorials that they've authored. And that will help us to think more about what 
how we can make the experience easier for the author specifically and keep improving those instructions. So yeah, we're excited so, both to have the new content and to have the, the guinea pigs for building tutorials. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. And it's yeah. just about the right time to be spinning up some more uh, proto school meetups uh, because of that. So uh, I'll yeah, exactly. So I think once this MFS tutorial comes out, I'll try to, publicize that to the chapter organizers and let them know there's new content because I know there are there are some folks that haven't touched the tutorials yet in their um, meetups but for those who are kind of working things as we intend anytime we add new content is an opportunity for them to, to have another meetup and, and work through it and we yeah. got great feedback from the um, Seattle chapters meet up a week or two ago so it was a, a really great opportunity to get feedback on the lessons themselves. So awesome. oh, very cool. All right. Well, we will uh, drop now and take our 14 minutes back to do hopefully productive things with. I'll just go do some more validation and learn many MFS lessons. Mm -hmm. um, and awesome. We'll catch everybody next week. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.